Jerry Agar for Ezra Levant. Monopolies are not good for the consumer. That's why they're illegal. But of course, against all reason and experience, some people still cling to the notion that if the monopolies run by the government, all will be well. Liquor sales, something the private sector could do quite well, is controlled in this country and with an iron fist in Ontario by the LCBO. Now they threaten a strike by their overpaid sales clerks. Here's union boss Smokey Thomas trying to raise the ire of these protesting clerks last week. When you're sitting across the table from our members who are just trying to make a living, and you're sitting there and you're on the sunshine list and way up that sunshine list, well guess what fellas, we'll take that sunshine list and you know we're going to shove it way up. Dave Bryans of the Ontario Convenience Store Association is here. Well, that worked as a, you know, a rallying cry, I guess, Dave, for the workers who are threatening the strike. But the fact of the matter is those people on the sunshine list are government employees. Sure. And they are the highest paid retail employee in this country. The LCBO workers. All the workers. Whether and I don't think it's more difficult, complicated, or, uh, you know, uh, a larger skill set to put a bottle of booze in a bag than it is to put a dozen eggs in a bag. Right. And, and, and there's, no, there's no retailer that could survive those kind of salaries. So, I mean, and, and to actually believe that we should all bend and give them more with the threat of a walkout is very unfair to Ontarians today. Well, as I said in the outset there, a monopoly is illegal for a reason, and that's what we have here. And so we pay high prices for something that is basically a commodity product these days. Sure. And when a monopoly controls, remember, we have two. We have a duopoly. We have beer yeah. stores and LCBO. And when they control the shelf, they control the price, they control who gets in. We see these fancy catalogs or magazines that are going out. We see them holding all of the manufacturers to ransom as well to buy into those ads and hurt other printing businesses in this province. It, it, it's time for change. It's time to expand and look at what Ontarians really want in Ontario. Well, there's been a fight for a long time to get uh, at least beer and wine available in convenience stores, which is what you you represent. Um, what, what's the public sentiment on that? Well, we ran an Ipso Read uh, campaign, re research campaign, and 67% of all Ontario surveyed said it's time to open up access. We want to be able to buy on a hot summer day 12 cold beers at a convenience store or a bottle of wine on Sunday night when friends stop by our house. We're a pretty mature society and quit treating us like 1927. Well, and treating us like children. Uh, and another uh, objection that comes up, I know I hear it from radio listeners all the time when I'm doing my talk show, is that while the government will control it so that my uh, so that miners don't get booze. Convenience stores, they just want to make a buck. But I know you've done some research on that. Let's take a look at some numbers here uh, in how you did with age-controlled products at convenience stores versus uh, foreign owned by multinationals. That would be the beer stores. And uh, the government run, uh, government came in last. Right. We are very proud of our We Expect ID program, and probably because we sell tobacco and government lottery. I think we sell $1.6 billion a year in lottery for, for the government, and, and we age test better than the LCBO and beer stores when we measure ourselves against them. And we didn't do this measurement to attack the two re retailers. What we did is to measure ourselves against comparable government-run agencies or multi foreign mul multinationals to see how does a small family-run convenience store do when it comes to age testing. And you know what? Hats off to all of them for doing such a great job. Well, let's talk about another aspect of that. All right, so if you run a small convenience store and you get caught selling booze, if it were available, age-related products to a minor, what happens to you? Well, your employees charged and the buildings charged and a second charge anytime in the next five years for that owner building uh -huh. uh, you lose your right to sell tobacco what happens if the LCBO does it well first off there's no oversight of the LCBO, LCBO by the Alcohol and Gaming Commission I don't know if, if Ontarians understand that okay. Alcohol and Gaming Commission who's supposed to regulate alcohol in the province and how it's sold has no regulatory oversight of the LCBO it is an internal oversight and they decide the penalties therefore no penalties. Well, and if we had competition, if the convenience stores could carry alcohol products and the LCBO still existed, you could compete. If the LCBO wants to go on strike, fine. I'll just go down to the convenience store. This is the problem with a monopoly. Well, I can tell you, the LCBO is a great shopping experience. I've said it all the time. Even I like shopping. there. We're not there to question that we should close it. We're there to say, let's open it up. First off, we won't all be held ransom at all if it's available in convenience stores, but more importantly, 
it's the convenience of today. The LCBO has restricted hours on, on a Sunday on a, on a long weekend. You have to stand in line then wait for the door to open at 12 and it closes crisply at 6 o'clock again. It's gone. Mm -hmm. And there's no chance if somebody drops by. This isn't how Ontarians want to be treated. Every other product uh, every other retailer is either open 12 hours, 24 hours a day, and everything every, has full access. This is not prohibition. This is 2013. All right, and convenience stores actually in more northern Ontario locations are already actually in the business. Yes, we have 217 convenience stores so sell a full line of LCBO products and beer. And finally, they take back all recyclables in every community. People walk to our stores, bring back the recyclables, rebuy their, their beer or alcohol needs, and, have, and never had a problem, and the world hasn't caved in because of that. Yeah, I think it just comes down to, as we've kind of been alluding here, do, do, does the government serve the people by treating people like grown-ups, or are we to be treated like children? And I think so far it's been the latter. I actually think the beer store monopoly, uh, monopoly and, and has more government relation people employed than the OCSA, the community or will ever have. And I think for some reason they're holding something over the government. This is not the day to have three, four multinationals control the price of beer, the products on, on the shelf and hurt my microbrewers, and dictate uh, how they're going to operate with no government oversight. Yeah. Well, it's got to end. And that's not the full list of problems with it, by the way. Uh, it's, you could have regional you know, products, a local operator would say, you know what, this product sells in my neighborhood, so right. I'm going to carry it. The LCBO says oh, that's not enough uh, um, sales province-wide, so we don't carry it. But I appreciate you coming in. Thank you very much. Good to talk to you.